Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here, and it's patch day for your client today, which means we have the patch notes for update 10.2. So as of me recording this, well, actually, when you're watching this, uh, your game should have already updated, uh, for North America at least. You should be updating around 1 o'clock in the morning my time. Now, the server will be updating on Wednesday around 3 o'clock in the morning, so that's when the patch actually goes live so we have a lot to get through in this patch so let's go ahead and get on through it if you guys want to read the patch notes for yourself i will post a link to that in the description down below but let's go ahead and get started so of course this begins the italian battleships part two event so they say with update 10.2 italian battleships continue to shine bright in the dedicated event that takes center stage uh feature of the ship brants semi armor piercing shells instead of HE shells. These shells can deal significant damage to weakly and moderately protected targets and vulnerable ship parts, but do not cause fires. Large number of guns with relatively short firing range and not the greatest accuracy. That's the statement. Decent maneuverability and armor protection. Tier 8 to 10 ships have access to the exhaust smoke generator consumable, which allows them to sneak away from enemies without having to reduce speed. However, shooting from, from, uh, from within a smoke screen while retreating isn't recommended. Battleships have high detectability when firing their main battery guns from within the smoke. So, if you haven't already seen my Lepanto or my Vittorio re uh, reviews, they are out. Uh, higher tier Italian battleships are very, very good in terms of sap and their guns. Of course, the accuracy isn't the best, like they do mention. Like, it's around German battleships before they got their aiming buff, so it's not that great. But with a smoke screen and their detection ranges, you can get pretty close in with Italian battleships to do what you need to do before stuff starts to go sideways. And when stuff does go sideways, you have your exhaust smoke, exhaust smoke generator to get you out of there. Early access Italian battleships are tier 4 to 6, as well as the tier 8 and 9 battleships that hit the seas in early access with the release of update 10.1 continue to be available in sequential and random bundles in the armory. With update 10.2, Italian tokens will only be obtainable from random bundles available for doubloons in the armory. Players can spend Italian tokens until the end of update 10.2. After update 10.3 goes live, all Italian tokens will be converted into credits at the rate of one, of one Italian token is 2,250 credits and 10.3 is the full release of italian battleships 4 to 10 so the italian battleship event like like i said in my lepanto review there's no reason reason to spend money on it these ships are going to become available in 10.3 for free to research so like i said before still well you can't grind out the tokens anymore so really there's no reason to spend money trying to get these ships so i say just chill you got what you got if you got some italian battleships great then you get some italian battleships no worries in another patch, you're going to be able to research them for free. Combat Mission Group Rewards, Italian Battleships, Containers, Signals, Credits, and the Legion Permanent Camouflage for Marco Polo, the Tier 9 Premium Italian Battleship. And this ship, they have a picture of her, her here in the, uh, I believe, the Centurion Camouflage. No, I'm sorry, the Legionnaire Camouflage. It's very, very nice. If you already own the Legion Permanent Camouflage for Marco Polo, you will receive co compensation in the form of 6,000 dubs. An Italian battleship container may drop one of the following premium ships. Uh, the Tier 6 Italian Didi Leone, the Tier 7 Italian Cruiser Duca, oh God, Duca Bruzzi, uh, the Tier 8 Italian battleship Roma, the Tier 9 Italian battleship Marco Polo, as well as special signal flags, free XP, uh, Regia Marina expendable camouflages, Day of Warships premium account, and doubloons. So there's a graphic there showing what you can get in it. Free bundle. The army is offering free random bundles. Inside you can find Italian battleship containers, one day of premium account time, doubloons, and other rewards. And there is a graphic there showing that. Uh, the bundles will be available for 18 days. You can obtain only one bundle per day. A total of 12 bundles will be available so you can skip six days and still be available to, correct, to collect the rewards. So, um, turns out these Italian containers, which you can buy from the store, they are going to be the only way you get Marco Polo until the event is over. At that time, you can then get Marco Polo for coal. Now, again, don't spend money on this. You can get Marco Polo for coal for free after this is over with. I will be getting her as soon as possible, which means I will be buying the containers to get her to, to, get her to review for you guys. So you know once the event's over if it's worth grinding out the coal to get the Marco Polo. And from what I've seen, it probably will be. But again, that determination will be made after I get done playing her for a bit. Alright, Big Hunt. 
Update 10.2 brings a new temporary battle type called Big Hunt, a revamped version of the key battle that went up that went live in update 9.10. Demonstrate your skills as you stand against foes in an engaging competition of the future by assuming command over a ship that represents one of three corporations. The new battle type pits 16 players against each other in AI-controlled monsters on the gigantic polygon map. Your main objective is to exit the polygon via the portal located at the center of the map. Be cautious, the portal opens up only sometime after the battle starts. You start out alone, but you can gather a team directly in battle. It is not possible to enter the battle as part of a division, but each player still starts the battle on their own. To coordinate their efforts, division mates will need to locate each other on the map and build up their team. The big hunt ends when, 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 when all surviving players exit through the portal or when the battle time expires. Temporary resource battle points will be issued to players for destroying monsters and other players. Specifically for the big hunt, we've added a new boss ship called Aurora. Defeating her won't be smooth sailing, but doing so will bring out a huge amount of battle points to the team that sinks her. And there's the Aurora there. I believe it is the, um, the Mosfa. So the big hunt, I enjoyed that um, mode last time, and it's nice to see it back. It was a nice change of pace. I know it's kind of futuristic. Not everybody likes it, but, you know, it's a nice change of pace and a nice new game mode to, to um, mess around with. Oh, there's more. Having a cu uh, cured a certain number of battle points, you can reinforce your ships directly in battle. Any battle points you've earned won't be lost or spent in battle. You can exchange them for rewards in the armory. Successfully exiting the polygon will, will double the amount of battle points you get. Grab the helm of one of a total of six ships and try your luck in Big Hunt. Each ship has a wide variety of modules that can have a significant impact on gameplay. The first three ships, which you are likely to already be familiar with from the key battles, are available immediately with all of their modules. The three new ships, Hector, Avenger, and Whirlwind, and all their modules will become available after completing chains of combat missions. Each ship is equipped with a distinct type of weapons and consumables that can have a drastic impact on gameplay. Hector, for example, can dive underwater, where she has a greater speed of maneuverability. So Hector's a freaking sub, um, and can also ignore enemy shells and torpedoes for a short period of time. Avenger can be equipped with large caliber mortars that have a big impact zone. Whirlwind offers a wide selection of torpedo armament and is capable of regenerating HP by damaging her enemy. So Whirlwind is a destroyer, Hector is classified as a destroyer, and the Avenger is a battleship. So that is very interesting. I like that they're kind of going out there with Hector having uh, you know, guns on the ship and being a surface ship but also being able to dive. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. Huh. Alright, so I can't wait for the, to, to try that out. I know a lot of people liked the mode last time, but I, again, I think it's just a, you know, a nice, fun, temporary mode to go mess around in. Alright, visual improvements. This is what I'm most excited for, except for like Marco Polo for this update. Update 10.2 ushers in a large-scale makeover of the in-game visual effects. All effects in the game, from shell tracers and fires on board ships, to gunfire, water splashes, and AA fire explosions, have been enhanced. New visual effects have been added for ricochets fired on ships, citadel hits, in incapacitated weapons, and active operation effects for the damage control party, repair party, main battery reload booster, defensive AA fire, and hydroacoustic surge consumable. Okay, I did a whole video covering this already if you want to go check that out. It's a very, very, very cool and, in my mind, very well needed update to the game's graphics, and the game looks absolutely beautiful, and we are now, at the time of this going live, only one day away from it, and I cannot wait for this. Alright, Division Star. Throughout Update 10.2, clan mem members will have access to special victory bonuses in the form of a Division Star. You get it, a div you can get a Division Star by playing a par as part of a division with your clan mates. A star is issued to each member of a division for the first victory gained by that division during Update 10.2. A star can be obtained in random co-op and clan battles as well as in operations. Earning a certain number of stars unlocks access to various rewards. If you switch clans, any stars and rewards you previously earned will remain with you. To see the role rosters of clanmates who can, who you can combine your efforts with in a division, as well as a list of rewards you can get, navigate to the division star tab in the clan section. So this sounds like just extra, uh, extra rewards for playing together with your clanmates. That's pretty cool. And you can see here there's a graphic up on screen for the rewards of stars that you get. Um, from, from the rewards, of the rewards that you get with their star values next to them, well, English is hard. So that's pretty nice. It looks like when you get, like, past 30, you just start getting a ton of oil. You do get, okay, so you get coal to the clan treasury, that's not to you, but you do get 25,000 commander XP, 
25 speed flags, five super containers for three stars. That's nice. I'm oh, sorry, f uh, five chance of, well, we'll try your luck containers that could be super containers when you get three stars and then you get a million credits for your first one. So that's pretty cool. And there's a graphic there showing what that screen looks like. Armory, new ships, tier 10 Austin, the, uh, cruiser that has sap in reload booster the american cruiser will be available for 29,000 steel and is a u.s cruiser that was designed at the end of world war ii the ship is armed with 12 dual purpose 127 millimeter guns and six turrets and carries two quintuple quintuple tube torpedo launcher mounts the cruiser has an unlimited number of charges for the main battery reload booster consumable, which reduces the reload of her guns by 75% instead of the standard 50%. She also has the hydroacoustic search and DFAA consumables in separate slots. Her A defenses are efficient and she's armed with sap shells instead of AP cell shells. So, 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 so she gets, that's a tongue twister, so she gets sap and HE and no AP. So yeah, this ship's going to be absolutely mental. I'm kind of glad it's available for still because that will limit its presence in game. It's just another rapid firing HE spammy ship, but this time with SAP. So, yeah. And I believe she can get her reload time. It's base 8 seconds, both a 75% reduction when her uh, main battery reload booster is active, and plus with the build, I think she can get her reload, her reload time down to like 1.8, 1.9 seconds. That's crazy. Marco Polo, available for 228,000 coal, is an Italian battleship that was designed in the 1930s as a further development of the Vittorio Veneto class battleships. Marco Polo is equipped with nine 46mm guns and three turrets. Like her researchable Italian counterparts, Marco Polo relies on AP and SAP shells, but her guns are more accurate. Instead of being equipped with the exhaust smoke generator consumable, she has a choice between spotting aircraft or fighter in a single slot. The ship boasts good concealment and decent armor protection. The this ship, this ship may also drop from the Italian battleship containers. Okay, so it doesn't say there that she will only be available in the uh, battleship containers. Um, that's what I heard. I haven't seen it anywhere in writing just yet that she will be only available in the containers, but I've heard from multiple sources that that, that is how she's going to come out at first. So if she does come out in the army straight for coal, great, thank you Wargaming, but I'm pretty sure they want to try and sell those containers first. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this ship too. This ship looks like it's going to be a really, really, really good ship. A perfect camouflage named Eagle for FDR is now available in the army in exchange for 10 rank tokens. So if you just want to play a really broken ship and have a nice camo for it, you can do that too. Alright, so this is some pretty big and pretty strange news too here at the end. With the release of update 10.2, summers will, be, will cease to be available in the army. We know that. However, when update 10.5 goes live, Eric Lovenhart, Nelson, T61, Haida, Z39, Asashio, Lennon, and Graf Spee will also cease to be available. The ships are being removed from the game due to a combination of their popularity and combat efficiency. In order to maintain the proper level of diversity in teams in terms of, shim of ship composition, these ships will cease to be available for an indefinite period of time, but may return in the future. So these ships are being taken out in 10.5, that's three months from now. So you have plenty of time to acquire the resources needed to get these ships, which is just the Nelson, really. The rest of these ships are just straight-up premium ships that you have to buy. The Nelson, on the other hand, is, I believe, 375,000 free XP, which you could easily get within three months. So, yeah, I don't really know, like, ship popularity and combat efficiency. None of these ships are, like, that popular to where there's multiple of them on one side in every match. The only ship that's close to that is, like, the Asashio. Because of her deep water torpedoes and that she's such a good clubber for battleships. But even then, it's not like you're seeing three Asashios per team. Like, when she came out, she was like that. But not so much anymore. In terms of combat efficiency, like, Eric Lovenhart's the only one really there. Like, Lennon's really, really, really good too. But she isn't that popular for some strange reason. I mean, Lennon, I mean, you're probably watching Lennon gameplay in the background right now. Lennon has nine 16 inch Soviet guns, which hurt like crap when you get shot by them and other than that I mean her armor isn't that great but if you angle it's really good her A is really lackluster she sits up really 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 high in the waterline and she's one of the easiest Soviet battleships to Citadel but the rest of them 
aren't that popular. Like, Nelson's, like, mildly popular, but she's been out for so long. I mean, it, not really that big of a deal anymore. She, 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 she does have the Dry Dot kill, which is pretty nice. And Graf Spee. Like, they've given away Graf Spee so much recently that I'm pretty sure literally everybody, their mom and their mom's cat, has Graf Spee. I mean, like, Haida used to be a really good DD back in the day. It's still a pretty strong DD, but isn't what it used to be. So, yeah, I don't know where they're coming at here. I mean, if they're just rotating premiums out of the shop, I see, I see no problem with that. I mean, most of these premiums have been out for a very long time. The youngest one here is the Love and Heart, and that ship's been out for, what, like, eight months now? Nine months now? Something like that? So... Yeah, I mean, I know some people are going to jump to the straight, oh, they're just trying to get you to buy the premiums before they go, but, like, like I just said, most of these premiums have been out for, like, well over a year now, and the people that want to get them probably already have them. Now, the only ship I would say to definitely grab before it goes would be the Nelson, that's a free XP ship, so just save up your free XP over the next three months and try to grab her before uh, 10.5 goes live, I mean, it's a ship you can get for free, it's a really good tier 7 battleship. You know, it's got the 16-inch guns at tier 7 with the British BBHE. And you got that 16-inch AP at tier 7, which is really nice. And you get the Super Heal. But other than that, I mean, yeah. Maybe they're just padding the Christmas containers for this year, which totally could be possible. But, I mean, just look at this list. Even I have just about every ship on this list except for the Asashio. No, actually, I do have the Asashio except for the Eric Levenhart. I have every ship on this list. But th that that is me, too. But, um... You know, of course, I buy them to review, but also a good chunk of these I just got by playing the game and uh, particip particip participating in events and such. So, so yeah. So that's it for the main changes and the main notes um, for the game. There's a bunch of um, bunch of bug fixes if you want to read those, but, but other than that, nothing else major. So let me know what you guys think about this update in the comments down below, especially about these ships that are being removed. Let me know what do you think. Do you think they're just rotating premium ships in and out of the game, or do you think they are trying to, again, create a cut type of artificial scarcity around these ships? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We are on our way now to 25,000 subs. We just passed 23,200 a few days ago, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.